Singer who's had a successful career with Genesis and as a solo artist. His newest disc is Dance, Into the Light. He's going to be playing something from it a little later in the show. But first, please welcome for a quick chat, Phil Collins. <laughs> so much for coming. Uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah? yeah? I'm just curious, right off the bat, are you backstage, are you, are you criticizing in your head Max's drumming? Are you listening to it? Nah, it's great to hear some big band stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, they do a great job with yes. this. But it's... It, it's two-headed bass drum, too, obviously. Is it? Thank you what is it? Is it two-headed? Is that some kind of complex lingo you drummers have to alienate the rest of us? <laughs> two-headed, two-headed, with the name. Oh. Two-headed. Yeah, okay. two-headed. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> I know what's going on. So enough of those plumber jokes. <laughs> All right, let's... Let's start at the beginning because, uh, you know, I remember the first time I heard your name, you were the, you were the drummer from Genesis, and then you made the transition yes. to the lead singer. And I was curious if that's something that, had you been the whole time you were drumming, frustrated, thinking, I want to get out there up front, I want to sing? No, no, no. I think I, drummers always have the best gig in the band. You know, they, they sit at the back, they're the backbone, the goalkeepers of the group. And the singers just wiggle their bum and appeal to the girls. <laughs> That's what, really? I, that's what I used to think. Uh huh. Until I went out front. Uh, no, but and now I, you wiggle your ass all right, around. Yeah. <laughs> You've learned how hard it is. There you go. No, it's okay. I mean, I, I, I didn't want to do the job, but nobody else wanted it, so I did it. Mm hmm. Okay. And, and what was somebody it? Somebody else can do the job now. <laughs> well, when you first got out there for the first time, were you surprised by what it was like to be the singer and the crowd reaction on the, say, the first uh, big tour? Yeah, the, well... Was it 86? Is it, is well, it... that, uh, 76 was when I started singing, but... Right. But the you guys Gen had a big tour in 86, 86 I remember. yeah. Genesis started to, to play um, a, a big 10-month tour that was a you know, worldwide thing. And uh, the very first dates we did were in Detroit. And uh, we thought we, we, just, we had hit singles and stuff, so our audience was kind of changing a little bit. But the first gig, we got lo loads of underwear thrown on stage, which was the first time that a progressive rock group like Genesis ever had pants and, and bras, you know? Mm -hmm. That we didn't have to buy ourselves, anyway. <laughs> um, so, uh -huh. and that, that, that was thrown on stage, and so we thought, this is crazy, you know, and the odd shoe. And then... The, the... <laughs> what do you want a shoe for? It's not I, a very erotic thing to get thrown at you on stage. Going, well, no, I always think about the people that, that throw them, because, you know, you're going home without a bra or pants, you know. You could, at least you can look normal, but going home with one shoe is like, what do I do with my shoe, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's extraordinary. How do you explain that away, you know? No, and it could hurt someone, too, oh, getting yeah, cocked off. Well, that the head side of it is dangerous, yeah. Yeah. But after three days of that, uh, someone stole all the underwear, which is... Which is stranger than throwing it, really. <laughs> Stealing used underwear is kind Someone of... Someone was looking for their pair that they missed, yeah. probably. Who can know at that point? Now, I heard you, you of course, you act as well. And uh, I heard you say uh, quite a while ago in some interview that you actually, uh, you were an extra in the oh, Beatles' yeah. first movie, A Hard Day's Night. Yes, I was. And I, I didn't see me. I, I seen the film you know, hundreds of times, and I, I was always looking, you know. I found friends of mine, but I never saw me. And then they, uh, they just did a, well, two years ago now, they did a 30th anniversary documentary of the making of A Hard Day's Night. And Walter Shenson, knowing I was a big water, a Beatles fan, he was the producer, and he said, uh, will you narrate it? So I said, yeah, you know I was in it. And he said, yeah, but we had to cut a lot of stuff out. So I said, uh, well, maybe you could send me some stuff and see if I could find me. And they actually cut You Can't Do That, the Beatles song, out of the movie. So he gave me this, and I was freeze-framing it, and I suddenly saw someone that I recognized, and behind that person, was this little round-faced, blonde-haired boy with a red tie with a diamond in the middle, and that was me! And you're in the movie, and so yeah. it, you were cut out, but we actually, to, to sort of make it up to you, we, we have the clip now, we'll show it to, to America. Maybe you can tell us what's going on, because we don't have the sound with it, I don't think. Oh, okay, well, this was the stuff, you know, makes you, well, this is uh, one of the songs, was, I think was You Can't Do That. There you are, That's right me. there. Oh! <laughs> they should... Well, after 30 years, you know? 30 years uh -huh. of, of never seeing you. It's quite a shock after, after that many years to sort of to say, yes, I knew I was in it, but now people know I'm not lying. Now you have proof. Yeah. You've, it's, you can win a bar bet with that, probably. That's right, yeah. Now you, uh, you, have, this, you have this manner, which uh, I think you, you are pretty much the way you come across. I talked to you before the show. I went uh, by your dressing room to say hi. And you're just a very affable, friendly guy. And I'm wondering, you know, sometimes in the rock world, people have to put up a little bit of a defense mechanism, you know uh -huh. what I mean? They have to put on, like, a, they have to adopt an attitude of, 
I'm too cool for the room, stay away from me so people don't take advantage of you. Right. You think that, that oh, has it gotten in trouble, you being too nice, you letting people oh, in yeah. too much? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I lent someone some money once, and uh, the guy thanked me through the papers. Uh, I mean, a considerable amount of money. He came to my front door and asked for it, and I gave it to him. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, this obviously was not the normal thing, and so he thanked me through the papers. And then I started getting letters from everybody, thinking that I do it all the time. And, what, and just recently, I had this lovely, lovely letter from this, this young boy, and it was a real you know, scrawny handwriting saying, Dear Mr. Collins, um, I'm 10 years old or 11 years old, and I have a, a disease called AIDS, which my mummy tells me may kill me, and my friends won't play with me. Uh, I wonder if you could send me an autographed picture. So, and I read this, and I thought, Jesus, you know, so I wrote a check out for 100 pounds, I sent him a check, said, buy yourself some toys, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the I wrote back a letter saying, what's really upsetting is the fact that your friends won't play with you, so here's mm -hmm. a present. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, a couple of months later, I got a letter from a, and my secretary handed it to me. He said, read it. So I said, dear Mr. Collins, I'm 11 years old, and I have a very bad disease, uh, which my mummy says might kill me, is leukemia. And uh, it was exactly the same handwriting. Oh, God. So, so I, I said, this is crazy. He said, well, my, none of my friends will play with me. Uh -huh. So I wrote him a letter. I said, uh, dear Alan, I'm very, very sorry that you have this terrible disease. I'm very pleased that you've got over AIDS, though. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> anyway, so, so it turned out... Did you, did you find this person, yeah, then? Well, no, what happened was the guy wrote back to me. His mother and father wrote back to me. This guy mm -hmm. is 20, you know. Right, right. And he's a student. He's a I lost my contact lens now. <laughs> Could you he's please a, give a, me 800 pounds? Yeah, he's a broke student, and uh, he s said, uh, you know, here's the 100... Actually, he didn't give me the 100 pounds back, but he's, he promised him to pay me back. He gave me the autograph photograph back. And, mm -hmm. you know, his mother and father wrote this letter. So it's weird. That is the lowest thing I think I've ever heard well, of he, someone you know, doing. It's just that he, he obviously didn't check off his list of who he'd sent the letters to. But, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's a sort of semi-sad but comical story because, mm -hmm. these, you know, you never know. You try and do someone, a, uh, you know, and then suddenly someone, uh, you know, slaps you on the face with it. Yeah. Now, you, uh, I, I know that... that you recently uh, made a, a bit of a change in your life. You moved, is that right, yeah. to, to kind of, uh, you went to Switzerland. Switzerland, is that right? And you're living there full time. You're full not just, time. you're not even a part-time resident uh, in England anymore. No, 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 I only have one home and that's, that's over there, which is, it's a lovely place, you know, I mean. I've never been there. You like Switzerland, though? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I met a lady from Switzerland, which is why I moved there. I mean, I didn't, I didn't choose it, as it were. It kind mm -hmm. of, I, I went there. But now I have to speak French and stuff and all exotic things like that, and it's, it's good fun. Yeah. What, which side are you... <laughs> well, hi there. <laughs> which side are you on? Are you on the... Because it, it's, it's divided, isn't it, Switzerland? Switzerland is like three countries, really. The German part is the very big part, and that's the kind of part that gets Swiss the strange reputation. Because, right. Um, because it, everybody thinks of Lederhosen and... Hum, just, just, hum, just, just. <laughs> You know, and, uh, and beer drinking and cuckoo clocks and chocolate and... <laughs> big horns. But and fact, they don't do that? No, well, some of them do. I mean, I, I don't know anybody that does. Uh-huh. But, um, no, but I live in a French part, which is, uh, which is a little bit more like a together France. Yeah. You know? A together all... France? Yeah. Well, you know, to fr France What's is a What's little... a together France mean? I'm well, just France curious. France is a little bit, you know, everyone's always late and it's like, you know, beep, beep, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I just got you to offend two countries. Yeah. Let's go for three. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh -huh. but, but uh, you know, the Swiss, the Swiss French are kind uh -huh. of, you know, they're kind of, they're, they're loose, but they're on time. Right. Gotcha. A nice compromise. <laughs> oh, it sounds who like cares? fun. You know, yeah, cares? well, have me and Andy over sometime. Yeah. I want to yes, hang out with the together French yeah. for a change. <laughs> All right, well, the new disc is called uh, Dance Into oh, the Light. With it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had anyone say that. All right, to hell with it. No, you're going to be... You're gonna come back in. Uh, you're gonna come back in just a bit, and yes. you're going to uh, play for us uh, a little gonna, later in the show. I'm gonna sing. All right. Thank you very much. It's really nice having yes. you on the program. Nice to meet you. Bill Collins, Kathy Griffin's coming up. We'll be right back. Stick around.